Hi everyone and welcome to Bristol Time. I'm Debbie and this is Dawn and today we're going to be talking about a heart healthy diet. So since it is February, Dawn's going to let us know what we should be doing to have a healthier heart. And as we age, our hearts lose some function and that's why it's so important to consume a healthy heart diet. So today we'll discuss the risk factors for heart disease and how to implement heart healthy nutrition into our everyday life. Yes. So Dawn, what's important, what is a heart healthy diet? So a heart healthy diet is basically an eating plan to help implement um, a healthy diet for your heart health. So the overall goal of a heart healthy diet is to reduce your sodium and to reduce saturated fat. Um, too much sodium can lead to high blood pressure and can overall um, have a big impact on the heart. And then fat, on the other hand, can cause a plaque buildup around your arteries, mm -hmm. um, which can lead to heart disease. So those are two things you wanna be watching out for on a heart healthy diet. Okay. And who needs to consume a um, heart healthy diet? So a heart healthy diet is for people that want to manage their high blood pressure, um, reduce their cholesterol levels, or just overall lower the risk of heart disease. Um, a heart healthy diet is really beneficial for people with CHF, which is congestive heart failure, if you have coronary artery disease, or if you have some type of fluid overloaded condition mm -hmm. like edema, which is swelling around like the arms and legs. Um, so that's who would really benefit from a heart healthy diet. Okay. Um, are there other names for um, heart healthy diet? Yeah, so a heart healthy diet is sometimes referred to as a cardiac diet. It could be a low sodium diet, or a big one that's really popular is the DASH diet, and that stands for Dietary Approaches to Reduce Hypertension. Okay, so I just have a question in regards to the sodium. Sometimes people just don't know, you know, how much sodium they should be taking mm -hmm. in a day. So what is the normal amount of sodium somebody who isn't on a heart healthy diet yep. could take per day? So on a heart healthy diet, it's recommended about 2,300 milligrams per day or less. Um, if you have a really severe condition, it's about 1,500 milligrams per day. Um, it really just depends on what condition you have, the severity of it. Um, so yeah, that's generally what I would recommend, about 2,300 really milligrams. It's really important for people to read yeah. the nutrition labels Absolutely. when yep. they're like going out and shopping. Mm -hmm. then. Okay. So do you have any tips about portion control on a heart healthy diet? Yes, so how much you're eating is just as important as what you're eating on a heart healthy diet. Um, you know, overloading your plate, taking seconds, eating until you're stuffed can really like add up the calories and can add up the fat and the sodium that you're eating. Um, specifically at like restaurants, those are typically way more than anyone needs in a meal. Um, so following healthy tips for portion control is really important. Um, and some tips that I usually recommend is using smaller plates and bowls to control your portions. Um, using measuring cups, it, for example, like uh, a, ser a serving of pasta is about a third of a cup to a half cup, which is about the size of like a hockey puck. You could also use your hands mm -hmm. for measuring. So like the palm of your hand is a good um, measurement for protein. And then your thumb is a good measurement for fat. And then like a cupped um, hand is a good measurement for vegetables. Um, so ju and judging serving, sc serving sizes is something you kind of develop as a skill. So I always say if you really have no idea, just use the measuring cups first and then you can eyeball once you more get more familiar with portion control. I think it's important for people to understand that maybe the portion control is important for the food that isn't so great for you, but if you yeah, want absolutely. like, you know, extra veggies or yep. more salad, then feel free yeah, to Yeah, it definitely like, depends what like the, the food is you know, for sure. Um, so how should fruits and vegetables be incorporated into a heart healthy diet? So I know this is like a more obvious thing, but fruits and vegetables are obviously really important on a heart healthy diet. Um, they're really great sources of vitamins and minerals. They have a high source of dietary fiber and fiber is known to lower cholesterol and it can also help lower blood, blood pressure. Um, eating more fruits and vegetables can help you cut back on higher calorie foods. Mm -hmm. So like meat, cheese, snack foods, things like that. Um, having fruits and vegetables in the diet can be easy if you have them on hand. Um, so keeping a fruit bowl in the kitchen, so you always have fruit out, and if you see it, you know, you might be more likely to eat it. Um, if you have chopped up veggies in the fridge or the freezer, at all times you probably are more likely to eat them. Um, the ones you want to include more of would be fresh fruits and vegetables, 
frozen, um, specifically frozen without any like added sugar, added syrup, mm. added sauce, things like that, that can really add up like the fat and the sodium. Um, the ones you want to be limiting are coconut and coconut is really, really high in saturated fat. And people don't typically know that, but it's super high in saturated mm -hmm. fat. It's almost higher than like bacon, like it's really high. Oh. So that's yeah. something you want to be watching on a heart either. healthy diet. Yeah, a lot of people don't. It's um, so no more coconut smoothies. For yeah. Me. Okay. Well, I mean, if you like it. No, I mean there's you can like have a little this bit. frozen like fruit thing that comes with a lot of coconut in it. Yeah. That's usually what just, I get. Just you know, so. just limit. You don't have to okay. restrict. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yep. So no deep fried. Yeah, Food definitely try to be, like that, I never like to say cut out things, but just definitely limit, limit be yeah. limiting, like okay. one or twice a week when just I say limit. Just probably be aware of what you're mm -hmm. having, and if you like schedule your meals, or if you know yeah. what you're making, then you know what you're going to be eating. Yep. Okay. And um, what are the best types of grains for a heart healthy diet? Um, so whole grains are the best sources of grains for a heart healthy diet. They have a ton of fiber, which again, lowers cholesterol. Fiber pulls cholesterol out of our blood which overall lowers it. Um, it also can aid in heart health. So you could be having things like um, whole grain bread rather than white bread, whole grain pasta, oatmeal is a really good source of whole grains. Um, the ones that should be limited are the white varieties. So white bread, white rice, muffins, um, waffles, donuts, things like that, just because those are typically made with a lot of butter and they have a lot of saturated fat in them, which again can clog the arteries. Okay. So I just want your opinion on some of like the pasta stuff that yep. I see at the grocery store. So sure. there's a lot of pasta that's like a black bean pasta or yeah. a chickpea pasta. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? So, it's a, so it? they are typically better alternatives to mm -hmm. a white pasta. However, some of them do not taste amazing. So you really gotta be kind of like trial and erroring yeah. them. I know there's one brand of chickpea pasta that I love and I think it tastes super similar to a whole grain pasta. Um, so you really just have to kind of trial and error with the brands, but typically they're higher in fiber and protein. So I don't, I usually do recommend them. Okay, But they're not better than the whole grain. There's just um, a different No, type. yeah, they're not any no. better than okay. a whole grain pasta. They would both have fiber and protein, mm -hmm. but it's a good alternative to white pasta if you eat a lot of that. Okay. And what can you tell us about fats? Mm -hmm. um, so fats um, are really important on a heart healthy diet. Limiting saturated fat and trans fat are the two most important for um, keeping your cholesterol low and controlling your blood pressure. So the American Heart Association offers guidelines for us with fat on a heart healthy okay. diet. So less than 6% of your calories should come from saturated fat. Mm -hmm. And that's about 11 to 13 grams. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who doesn't know what saturated fat is, yes. what, is, what is So it? a saturated fat is a fat that is solid at room temperature. Okay. So think of butter, mm -hmm. it's solid at room temperature. Um, if you think of a fatty meat, it usually has like the oh, band yeah. of yeah. fat in it. Mm -hmm. And then unsaturated fat is fat that's liquid at okay. room temperature. So that's your olive oil. Um, avocado is also an unsaturated fat, but it is solid at room temperature. So that's like the only exception oh, okay. there. Um, but that's what I mean when I say saturated okay. fat. Um, trans fats are fats that are made when liquid oils are processed into a solid mm -hmm. fat. They're actually banned in Massachusetts, so we typically don't have to worry about them. That um, happened in like 2009, I believe. Oh. Um, but there are ways we can cut back on saturated and trans fats. So that would be like trimming off the fat of cuts of meat. Um, like if you have a piece of chicken, kind of trying to get the fatty parts mm -hmm. off, same with like steak and pork, using less butter. Um, if you really like butter, try swapping it out for margarine. That's typically a better option. Um, using low fat substitution. So if you really like milk, try having a low fat or mm -hmm. skim milk. Same with cheeses, try having like lower fat cheeses. Um, same thing with yogurt, try having lower fat varieties of yogurt. Um, and the ones you wanna be limiting would be butter, lard, bacon fat, sausage, um, typically gravy is really high in saturated fat because it's made from butter, mm -hmm. um, like a cream sauce, and then again, coconut oil and regular coconut is something you want to be limiting for sure. Okay. So adequate, pro adequate protein is super important for older adults. How should protein be incorporated into a heart healthy diet? Um, so lean protein options are your best option. So that would be like chicken breast, pork loins, um, turkey, 
any type of fish is great. Um, lower fat dairy products and eggs are good sources of protein. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to be chewing the, choosing the lower fat options. Fish is a really go good alternative to high fat meats because it, they typically contain omega-3 fatty acids. And that is something that can help lower um, our fats in our body called triglycerides. Mm -hmm. Um, the highest amounts of omega-3 fatty acids are in like salmon, mackerel, um, really fatty fish. And then there are plant sources of omega-3s as well, which is like flax seeds, walnuts, um, and canola oil is another good source. Okay. Um, so there are uh, non-meat varieties of plant proteins. So like legumes, beans, peas, lentils, if you don't eat a lot of meat, those are good options for protein. Um, soy, so like tofu is another yeah. good source, or um, like a bean burger instead mm -hmm. of a regular hamburger is a good source of plant protein. Um, again, the ones you want to be limiting are the full fat milk, um, if you eat any organ meats, so like liver, kidneys, those are really high in saturated fat. I don't know how many people are eating those, but um, bacon and sausage are another one you want to be limiting, and then the fried, like deep fried things for okay. sure. So when I think about heart healthy diet, I typically think of about sodium. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So sodium is a really big thing on the heart healthy diet. So again, eating too much can lead to high blood pressure, which is a really big risk factor for heart disease. Um, limiting salt or sodium in the diet is really important for a heart healthy diet. And again, the heart healthy, I mean, the, the American Heart Association recommends we have 2,300 milligrams or less on a heart healthy diet. Um, and again, if you have a really severe condition, it could be um, 1,500 milligrams. So um, a good way to reduce sodium is kind of the most obvious one is not adding salt to cooking, getting rid of the salt shaker or only using it here and there. Um, eating fresh foods is a good way to not have a ton of sodium because typically fresh foods, there's no salt added. Um, if you like those like convenience foods, always look for a low salt variety or no added mm -hmm. salt. Um, and then another way to reduce sodium is choosing your condiments very carefully. People don't typically think of condiments to be high in salt, but like ketchup, mayonnaise, mm -hmm. soy sauce is a huge yeah. one. Soy sauce has tons of salt. Um, so always try to look for the like lower salt mm -hmm. varieties of those. Um, some alternatives would be like herbs and spices, lemon juice, salt-free seasoning blends, things like that. Okay. I think it's important for people to really look at the label because, yeah. you know, even bread has sodium in it. Yep, bread is pretty like, high in sodium yeah. too. So everything that you kind of look at has, has sodium. Mm -hmm. So people really need to be aware of that. Yeah, and um, something else to think about is like sodium is a mineral. So mm -hmm. like things that are grown in the ground may have sodium in them yeah. so it's kind of it's hard to avoid it overall right. and that's why the amount is so high like 1500 milligrams right. it's like it seems like a super high number but it's really, it's really not yeah it's yeah. really not so what are some of the common complaints about the heart healthy diet um the biggest complaint i hear for people that are on a heart healthy diet is that their food doesn't taste good because there's no salt on it um so again there are so many ways you can flavor things without salt um, lemon juice, lime juice, vinegar, none of those have a lot of sodium, so those are great options. Um, herbs, so like dried basil, fresh basil, dill, rosemary, parsley, any herb is a good flavor. Um, you can buy salt-free seasoning blends, so like Mrs. Dash is a really popular one I see people use. Um, I think McCormick makes a salt-free mm -hmm. um, seasoning blend. So those are good options for that as well. Um, do you have any tips for eating out on a heart healthy diet? Yes. So it is hard when you're eating out just because you don't typically know what is getting into the food and you don't have like a label right in front of you of everything that's on it. Um, so I always recommend to choose an entree that doesn't have a ton of like added sauces, added cheeses, um, or added butter. And if it does have those things, ask for it on the side so you know how much you're eating. Um, an ideal meal would be a smaller portion of meat, half the plate being vegetables, and then the other quarter of the plate being a whole grain. Um, you could ask, like if you get like a bread basket with butter, you could always ask for margarine instead. That's typically a better option on a heart healthy diet. Um, 
try to get foods that are like steamed, boiled, mm -hmm. baked, roasted. Those typically don't have a ton of things added to it. Whereas like deep fried or sauteed would have a lot of like cream, butter, salt, things like that mm -hmm. added to it. So always ask for alternatives with the restaurant. I know it seems annoying, but if you're really, you know, cautious about a heart healthy diet, you're gonna want you're to gonna make want sure to you're that. still sticking yeah. to it. Okay. So the best part of the meal is the dessert. So what yes. kind of desserts is somebody able to order when they're going out? And yeah, so you know, what I, like I always say, I don't like people to restrict themselves. So if you wanna have a nice dessert once or twice a week, I'm not gonna say that's horrible. Um, I just wouldn't make it like a consistent thing. So if you wanna have like a cookie one night, go for it. If you wanna have a piece of cake one night, it's okay. I just wouldn't make it a consistent habit because consistently it can add up and it can you know lead to some risk for heart health. I'm happy um, with the once or twice a week. I thought you were gonna say once or twice a month. So. No, no, you know, gotta enjoy life too. Okay. Good, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we had a great discussion about yep. Heart Healthy Diet, and we'll see you again next time. Hi everyone, and welcome to Bristol's Nutrition Time. Today we have John Ropiak, and he's here to talk about the, um, the Obudsman Program. He's the Obudsman Program Manager at Bristol Elder Services. So John, what can you tell me about the Obudsman Program? Sure, so the Long-Term Care and Budsman Program is a program designed by the federal government back in 1973. Um, primary focus is to ensure advocacy for residents and that their rights are respected. Um, we also empower residents to also do self-advocacy. Okay. So what's the role of the Obudsman Volunteers? So the role for the Ombudsman Volunteers is to conduct uh, weekly facility visits um, to the nursing home or rest home that they're assigned to. We also mediate concerns with nursing home and or rest homes, mm -hmm. um, usually with the social worker or the administrator of the facility, and we attend monthly um, volunteer ombudsman meetings. Okay, so with the ombudsman program, you're the program manager, but then everybody else uh, that might fall under your guide is a volunteer, is that how it works? That's correct. Okay, yeah. and uh, what are some of the main concerns that residents sometimes face? So some of the main concerns are care concerns, um, primarily due to staffing levels at the facilities. Okay. Other concerns are food related um, mm -hmm. with availability, um, taste, um, temperature, yeah. um, and also the quality. Okay. Um, I do remember this because my grandmother was in a nursing home while she mm -hmm. before she passed, and that was a major concern, the food quality. I didn't know anything about the Obudsman program. And I mean, if I had, I probably would have like contacted somebody just so that they could help us advocate for sure. her. Um, but how do you think COVID has impacted um, the concerns of residents? Yeah, right. so COVID in general has had a huge impact on nursing mm -hmm. homes and rest homes. Um, the biggest issue currently is um, making sure they have proper staffing levels to care for the residents that they yeah. have. Okay, um, and what does the Obesman do to resolve some of these concerns? Um, so we usually um, take the concerns, we meet with the contact person, which is a designated person in each facility that we work with to ensure um, resident concerns are addressed and resolved. Okay. Um, and what's the relationship with the nursing homes? Um, it's a collaborative one. Uh, we really work with the nursing homes. We try to resolve the concerns um, as timely as possible um, to ensure that the residents are getting a good experience. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question, just if somebody does have a concern and they're a resident at a nursing home, how do they go about knowing who their ombudsman is? Yeah. So actually the facility is required to have postings of who the designated ombudsman is for the facility. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way. Another way is we do the weekly visits um, and we go around and check in with residents. Um, we give them cards okay. with our phone numbers mm -hmm. to call us anytime with any concerns. Okay. And what do you think the benefits are to volunteer to be an ombudsman? Um, well, making a difference in a resident's life is huge. Um, a lot of times we're a ray of sunshine when we arrive, knowing that they have somebody that's yeah. there, there for them. Um, we see many successes with their um, care, um, food, and also help with discharge to the community. Okay, that's great. Um, and what's the commitment for the volunteers if somebody was being interested in doing it? Sure, it's about two to three hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, to do the visits, to do the documentation, 
um, from the visit and to follow up and attend the monthly staff meetings that we have that are educationally based. Okay. Um, do they get any type of training yeah. if they want to be a volunteer? Absolutely, yeah. So they're trained by the state mm -hmm. ombudsman program. Um, that's required to start um, being an ombudsman. Um, that usually entails about three weeks of time, um, six to seven hours a week for about two to three sessions a week. Okay. And currently it's all online, so it's very convenient. Oh, great. And after you complete it, you receive a certificate from the state, um, mm -hmm. so you're a certified ombudsman. Okay. And then once you become a certified ombudsman, are you uh, designated to a different like program, or depending on where you live, they kind of tell you like um, where to go? Is that how sure. it works? So we try to make sure it's a good fit for mm -hmm. both the volunteer and the facility. So we do um, tours ahead of time. Okay. Um, so they become very familiar. We try to assign them as close to their residents as possible oh, as great. well. Yeah, that's really mm -hmm. great. I think you know residents need to have somebody that they can trust and like who's going to help them even advocate for themselves or who can advocate for them and you know um, everyone and somebody who kind of knows them and, and their personality. I think that's like really great that somebody goes and visits them every week and gets to know the person and you know, just sees how they're doing. Right. Yeah. So um, if somebody is interested in volunteering or learning more about volunteering for the Abusman program, who should they call? Yeah, they should call me at um, John Ropiak. I'm at Bristol Elder Services. I'm the Ombudsman Program Manager um, and my number is 774-627-1326. Um, and we do cover our nursing homes and rest homes in the greater Attleboro, Fall River, and Taunton areas. Okay. So if we have any families that might, or individuals that are, might be at a nursing home or rest home, if they have any concerns, should they call that same number that you um, just gave out? Yes. Yes. So they call the same number, which yeah. is 774-627-1326. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.